gotta keep the gotta keep it cold, you know. guys i'm sitting on top of this alice 5040 this is the one i got at the auction uh if you watch that video anyway the uh this alice 5040 i finally got it running good it purrs like a kitten um got no leaks resolved all the leaks uh she's doing really good you know it runs it operates steers on a dime um and uh everything's looking great so um, but the one thing I got to get on are my cluster gauges. So the one thing I noticed is the tack works, works and the error meter works, but, uh, this has a fuel, uh, cluster here that doesn't work. And then there's the temperature gauge and well, it says it's warm, but, uh, I mean, I, this thing's cold. I haven't started this thing. I'm going to put a battery gauge on there instead. Um, so I'm just going to get rid of that, put a battery gauge, and then uh, I do want to know my temperature. It's very important to know what your temperature is on your tractor, because when you're running the hell out of her, um, you're going to find out if it overheats, trust me. You know, the Amish apparently redid this tractor, but I mean, honestly, she's got very minimal blow-by. I really don't think they took the engine apart. I think they stripped the engine down. They probably did some head work to it, painted it. Um, they did an okay paint job, but, uh, you know, I think the 3,000 hours that she's doing, 2989 hours, is pretty original, if you ask me. So, put those somewhere. Let's see what's going on back here. Oh, trade wires. Whoa. What the fuck? Jesus Christ. And no wonder this thing wasn't working. Okay, so this okay, so this is your this is your positive loop for all of them. The fuck else is this? Jesus, this wire's mangled too. What the fuck? Oh, there's a connector. Okay. This looks like a positive negative connector. It's just a positive negative. Jesus. Well, no wonder this thing wasn't working. So, let me, you know, I don't understand people. So, the Amish, they take this whole thing apart to clean it and get it all nice. But you leave this fucked up wiring? I mean, come on. Okay, so I had to lift this little the dash up here because we're removing the old starter and there. I mean, the old uh, key switch. And the key switch had like 10 million uh, connections on it, which I was uh, kind of surprised with. But I think this tractor had a lot more lights and stuff um, than. Uh, then I'm led to believe. So, what I'm doing here is I'm putting this forward key switch in. Again, this is just an on-off switch. Yeah, that looked good. Uh, it's supposed to turn to the right. Yep, okay. So I'm just putting this, uh, this is an old Ford. Well, okay, so this key switch came from Tractor Supply. But uh, I decided with a Ford, like an old school 8N, 9N, Maybe even like a 4,000 key switch because um, it's just on off, you know, so it looks nice, but you just turn the key on and then you still have to hit um, your starter switch. I like that because we're going to have an on feature where uh, the gauges and battery uh, battery gauge goes on too, so we'll know what the battery power is. Anyway, so this is your starter. This is your solenoid. 
So this here, this is your positive leads. All right, this big one here, this goes to your battery. And then one of these, looks like this red and black one, we saw that by the key switch, this probably goes to the key switch. And this is another one that probably goes to the alternator or something. And then on your back side here, this is the con. This is your one contact. So this is when you turn the, the the starter switch on. This allows the contact to the to the positive, and this is what actually turns the the mode the, turns the starter to turn the motor. So we need to find out where this switch is on the on the dash. So I'm gonna put a little alligator clip on here. Right. and you're gonna hear if I click these two hear that so I'm listen, listening for that noise um, I'm gonna be listening for that under the dash key So that can all get stuffed back in there. So now, let's test this out. Key off, does not turn over, key on. It's a tight diesel engine, that's good. Okay, so I'm on Tractor Supplies website here, and they sell this tractor temperature gauge and i've seen it in the store before and it says here the universal heat indicator for two inch mounting hole and on the alice it is a two inch mounting hole uh 250 okay yeah replacement temperature gauge fits all liquid cooled engines all of them and i see there's a, a bushing there which i think will fit the temperature sensor it looks like there's another one there I don't know. Says it. Whatever. Let's go to Tractor Supply and uh, give this universal tractor temperature gauge from ca County Line. You. All right. Windy as hell, but we're looking at this County Line instructions, <clears throat> and it says install temperature gauge or temperature gauge installation instructions. Install gauge, come on, it's windy out. Install gauge and dash. Put pipe dope on threads. We're gonna use Teflon tape. Install probe without bushing and tighten. If probe is loose, then install one bushing as shown. Now they give you three bushings. I don't know why, you only need one, but they give you three and an adapter. And we're gonna need the adapter on this thing. So let's look at this uh, a little closer. All right, so, sorry for the sun glare. Let's see if my big ass can block it out. So on this Alice 5040, that is our temperature probe right here. It's a seven eight socket, so we're gonna take that out. <clears throat> we're probably gonna be gushing a little bit of coolant, that's okay, and install my thing there. Now what I pre-did is I pre, uh, uh, Teflon these they said to use pipe dope but you can use Teflon tape um, and I'm gonna need my so what I'm gonna do is let me I'm gonna install this bushing first here and then I will throw this thing in and we'll see if it's tight and then I'll add one of the three bushings they gave us so let me get my uh, Okay, so I took the probe out, we got all the fluid out, and it looks like I got a fitting issue here. So, the one that I bought, that's supposed to be universal, it's not look like it's going to be universal, guys. 
Yeah, it's definitely not. Okay, so on this 5040, unfortunately, the temperature sensor port is far too large. Uh, the thread size, I should say, is not far too large. It's the thread size is different than what the tractor supply part gives you. So before I do any crazy, goofy, uh, you know, adapter changes, I was looking at the top and I found this Allen bolt. And this bolt looks like the exact thread I'm going to need for our temperature probe. So I took that out. That's at the top. And here she is. It should thread just hit right in. It should. And I don't know. I might install one of these bushings. I don't know if I should. It's kind of weird how this thing is sitting. This thing kind of just... Falls, yeah, it falls right the fuck in. Oh. Unfortunately for this Alice 5040, the tractor supply universal thermostat kit will not work. Um, it won't work because the fitting that I had to go measure it up, but it's a JIC, like a hydraulic fitting. It's odd for a temperature sensor, but that's what it is for that. See, th you know, these are pipe threads, so that's not gonna work. So we will have to go after the one um, pipe plug, you know, the Allen pipe plug that I took out. And I'm gonna have to put a little pipe extension here. See, I just dropped the one fitting. Um, but I'm gonna have to put, I'm gonna have to put um, this little pipe extension in and then I'm going to use this union as well and what I'm going to and if you look the reason I got to do this because this is a thicker wall you see that this will actually compress this will actually stop before um, this dropped right in I had to fish it out so I am going to use a bushing all right I am going to use a bushing that way I get better so oh, I'm going to use a bushing because I have to use a union so I can uh, fasten this in, but the bushing will give me enough space to where it bottoms out here. So I'm gonna thread this into that pipe plug hole. I gotta tape everything up. So this will stand out, and then I'm gonna fit this in just like so, and then thread it in. So I just started threading this in by hand, and now I'm just using the top of this union <clears throat> to help me snug this up because I can see that this is going to fit right in yeah and it's gonna be fully saturated so that's good so let me just put some more Teflon on this Start this thing up and see if it's leaking anywhere. All right, so she's been running for like 15 minutes, but uh, it's not up there that high. But you can see she's at went up to 150 at least. Yeah, so at least the thermostat's working, which is good. Better gauge is working nice. So I've got three working gauges here, which is cool. Uh, but most importantly, it's not leaving. So I didn't do anything too fancy with the wiring, but pretty much, so I got my key switch here, so my light fixture, and I'm using these two light fixtures. I tested them, they work. And I gotta decide if I put it right here or if I put it right there. And I'm thinking right here. So I got more uh, more oomph here. So I think I'm gonna put it right here. Now when I install these, I always install a washer here because as a farmer, when I'm here, I always want to rotate these and move these however I'd like. And having a washer allows you to do that much easier 
than just going right here to the bracket. All right, it'll be it'll be tough. turn the light on or turn the switch on now the light comes on so that ain't too bad we'll do the same thing on the other side oh. gotta keep the uh, gotta keep it cold you know crimper And will there be light? Holy, no bubblegum shit on this one. <laughs>